Hey guys, Mars Thinking here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video, and we are back for another episode of Fan Creation Friday, the series where I take your guys' custom cards, pick out a bunch of them, and show them off in this video. Uh, as always, the uh, picks were judged by myself, the mods, and the winner from the previous week, which was CJ Blaze. So we will be going through some of the top picks in this video, and obviously ending up with the one that we decided was the best overall. There were a couple that were picked multiple times um, as always as I say with every episode um, all the entries were good we just can't go through all of them in a video so don't be too uh, sad if your one didn't make it in there's always the potential for next time and remember this series is only open to people who are members of the discord it's where the forms and everything get posted so if you want to take part in the future and submit a custom card that could make it into one of these videos make sure you join the discord the link will be in the description and keep an eye out on the fan creator channel so the theme that won for this week was to create a character based from any of the movies so it could be movie heroes movie bosses didn't have to necessarily have that as a leader skill but it had to be something that was themed around one of the many dragon ball movies and we definitely got a lot of submissions from all across the different series of movies so there was a lot of interesting ones to look through here very difficult to pick the ones that made it into the final video but these are the ones that we picked I want to give a special shout out to Gogeta for uh, his design. It was pretty funny, but he decided to pick the character from Fusion Reborn, who uh, is only credited in that movie as the dictator. And the card was actually quite well designed, but, you know, just because uh, I ain't going to run the risk of that on YouTube, that's not going to make it into the video. But I'm sure you can all guess who that is if you've seen Fusion Reborn. Um, yeah, I did have a good laugh, but... Sorry, buddy, that's not making it into the video. So let's go ahead and have a look at the first one that we picked right here. Okay, so here we have the first entry for this episode, which is from uh, Bootleg PBJ, which is a great name. Uh, it's an extreme tech metal cooler that transforms into the metal cooler army. So shout out, we, uh, we pretty much always have to have an extreme tech entry in uh, this series because extreme tech still the typing that needs the most love so most of the time when anyone submits an extreme card 50 percent of them at least are extreme tech which is pretty understandable considering how bad that uh, typing is at the moment so the leader skill is revenge and target goku categories three key hp and defense 170 and attack 130 this is an interesting build for the uh, leader skill we haven't seen this typing for quite a while because I believe this is the same type that the original STR Gohan had for Hybrid Saiyans where HP and defense are 170 and attack is 130. Um, I feel like this is the kind of typing for that leader skill that people don't really like because obviously people want to see their units hit the big attack stat numbers but obviously with the meta that Dokkan is in now with some of the hardest events in the game defense is definitely more important. Um, so this is a very solid leader skill having the high defense and a solid amount of HP. Uh, the super attack name and effect, so this is a TUR because the uh, competition was open for LRs and TURs. The metal cooler super attack is raises attack and defense, does immense damage to the enemy, and then the metal cooler army is does immense damage to the enemy and raises extreme class allies attack and defense 30% for one turn. So this is similar to units like the AGL Bardock where they stop stacking after transforming. So in a longer form event, you obviously want to keep them in the metal cooler form for as long as possible, stack up that defense to a reasonably high number and then go ahead and transform into the metal cooler army. Um, the metal cooler passive is three key, uh, defense 160, attack and defense 60% when facing only one enemy, attack and defense 60% when performing a super attack, attack 10% up to 100% with each attack received or evaded. If HP is 33% or less at the start of the character's attacking turn when facing a super class enemy, revised with 66% HP recovered by exchanging with the metal cooler army when the character or an ally attacking in the same turn is KO'd. So basically it is a revival skill that transforms them into the metal cooler army. They have to have 33% HP or less at the start of the turn and be against a super class enemy. So this is a little bit restrictive. Um, if I had to make a criticism, like this is probably what would keep this one from having won this week. Just because being 33% or less HP, uh, obviously in something like Super Battle Road, that wouldn't be that difficult to get very early on. 
but especially in longer form events, a unit that is also infinitely stacking their defense, this becomes a little bit more difficult to actually hit. And obviously, you know, units like the Goku and Vegeta exchange unit come to mind where, you know, you want to see them exchange into the other unit. You want to see all the other animations and all that kind of stuff. And this passive does feel a little bit restrictive for the transformation. Also, as you can see, starting off here, his attack will be quite low. Because um, against, like, when you perform a super attack, he has 60% attack. That's the only attack he's getting from his passive. You're getting an extra bit if you're facing one enemy, and then each attack received or evaded, it will build up. So once he's fully built up, he could definitely be hitting some high numbers, but he obviously is designed to be much more of a longer form defensive unit. So if you do get the exchange into the Metal Cooler army, their passive is 3 key, attack and defense 160, reduces damage received by 10% up to 60%, the less HP remaining the greater the reduction, uh, launches an additional attack with a high chance of becoming a super attack, Attack and defense 60% and launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack when facing a pure Saiyan enemy. So obviously that covers quite a lot of the game. So even at base 55% they have the potential to launch 3 super attacks in one turn against a pure Saiyan. Um, and then they get key 3, defense 60 when facing 2 or more enemies and attacks effective against all types when facing a super class enemy. So this unit is really all in on the... Uh, like fitting the law, like the theme, this unit is basically designed to be fighting against super class pure saiyan units um, and obviously with all these things active, especially in like Super Battle Road where there's multiple opponents, they're going to be getting a huge amount of buffs. So Super Battle Road I think is probably going to be the place where you will see the Metal, cool Metal Cooler Army like exchange revival thing um, and then they're going to be very good in that mode, especially against saiyans. And then Metal Cooler has an active skill. An instant transmission, the quote is one of my favourite techniques. Enemies attack and defence minus 50% for one turn and evades all attacks for one turn. So the Metal Cooler unit himself will evade all attacks, but he's also debuffing the enemies attack and defence, so any other units on the rotation are obviously going to take less damage as well. And this can be activated from the start of the turn when facing a pure Saiyan enemy. So again, I feel like that's a little bit too restrictive because obviously any event where you're not fighting a pure Saiyan, it just means you can't use his active skill at all which I think is a little bit disappointing. I wouldn't like to see a unit built that way, but I do like the active skill and I really like the overall theme of the unit when fighting against pure Saiyans, but that's just a little bit of a nitpick for the unit overall. Um, so the Lynx Metal Cooler has Auto Regeneration, Big Bad Bosses, Thirst for Conquest, Strongest Clan in Space, Universe Most Malevolent, Nightmare, Fierce Battle, and then the Metal Cooler Army has Auto Regeneration, Big Bad Bosses, Strongest Clan in Space, Universe Most Malevolent, Nightmare, Shocking Speed, and Fierce Battle. So I think it's what? Shocking Speed and is exchanged from Thirst for Conquest, I think is the major difference. Um, and then he's on Movie Bosses, Resurrected Warriors, Artificial Lifeforms, Wicked Bloodline, Terrifying Conquerors, Target Goku, Revenge, and Corroded Body and Mind. The unit is a TUR. Yeah, the active skill can only be used as the Metal Cooler. So once you've exchanged into the Metal Cooler army, you can't use the active skill. So overall, I do think this unit is very cool. Um, it was picked by one of the other judges as well. But like I said, there's a couple of little nitpicks that keep it from being at the very top for this week. But I definitely do like this unit. I would really like to see a Metal Cooler that transforms into just a whole bunch of Metal Coolers. Not necessarily through a revival, but I do think this was a fun unit and quite well designed. So shout out to Bootleg PPJ for this one and let us move on to the next one. Okay, so next up we have the entry from Sint, which is a Super Saiyan Vegeta who will transform into Super Saiyan God Vegeta, and he is a Super Tech unit. So his leader skill is Worthy Rivals or Gifted Warriors categories, 3 key, HP, Attack and Defense 170. His Super Attack effect as Super Saiyan Vegeta, he does the Direct Smash. Greatly raises attack, raises defense for one turn, and does immense damage to the enemy. Now, as the Super Saiyan God Vegeta, he actually has multiple stages of super attack, similar to like Gotenks or uh, STR Cell, for example. Uh, so as God Vegeta, if you get 9 to 10 key, he does the Gallic Gun, does immense damage to the enemy. 
11 key is the God Heat Flash, massively raises attack for one turn, causes to immense damage to the enemy with a great chance to perform a critical hit, so 70% chance to crit on his 11 key super. And then the 12 key is Dead End Attack, raises attack, raises defense for one turn, and does immense damage to the enemy. So obviously the majority of the time if you're having to get the 12 key super, depending on the rotation with supports and stuff like that, he is infinitely stacking his attack and raising defense for one turn but if you can get that 11 key he's massively raising his attack for one turn and has the great chance to crit so like you can infinitely stack his attack for a few turns with the 12 key and then the 11 key is going to do even more damage which is pretty crazy um it, a lot of this unit is built around critting which is very interesting so if we look at his passive he is uh eight attack and defense 140 percent guards all attacks so obviously he's going to be very good in pretty much every event has a high chance of stunning the enemy performs an additional attack with a high chance of becoming a super attack after performing a critical hit so if you crit on his first attack then he will perform a guaranteed additional normal attack and that has a 50 percent chance of converting into a super attack instead which is pretty cool and then once he's transformed into the Super Saiyan God Vegeta, well actually we'll look at the transformation here. So transformation conditions, transforms once a critical hit has been performed or after five turns from the start of the battle. And then you can use the active skill transformation. So I think this is quite interesting because five turns is a bit long to wait for some events. Obviously in a long form event it doesn't really matter. But if you can crit straight away on turn one, then you can transform straight away on turn two if you want to, which is quite an interesting design. I feel like that's probably why he's a tech unit, because then even at 55% without any skill orbs or anything like that, he does at least have level five crit. So he is going to be a unit that you're going to want to put some crit into. Uh, and then his passive, once he is the God Vegeta, is attack and defense 170, guards all attacks, has a high chance of stunning the attacked enemy for two turns, performs two additional attacks with a high chance of becoming super attacks after performing a crit. He seals the attacked enemy when there is a movie boss's enemy. So obviously once he's become God Vegeta, if you get his 11 key super, that gives him a 70% chance to crit as well as the abilities from the hidden potential as well, although they are rolled separately so they don't stack together. But if that initial super attack crits, then he's getting two additional attacks that have a high chance of becoming additional supers. So like this guy rainbowed with a decent mix of crit and additional uh, is going to be firing off a ton of super attacks um, and getting lots of crits, doing lots of damage. So very, very strong. Uh, his links as a Super Saiyan, Saiyan Warrior Race, Golden Warrior, Super Saiyan Prepared for Battle, Prodigies, Royal Lineage and Fierce Battle. And then when he becomes Super Saiyan God, Saiyan Warrior Race, Godly Power, Super Saiyan Warrior Gods, Prodigies, Royal Lineage and Fierce Battle. He's on Realm of Gods, Transformation Boost, Pure Saiyans, Super Saiyans, Movie Heroes, Vegeta Family, Siblings Bond, Worthy Rivals, Bond of Master and Disciple and Gifted Warriors. So he says he's got a Gotenks style super attack, that's why he doesn't have key in his passive and doesn't get key in his links. So yeah, apart from prepared for battle, um, well yeah, God, God Vegeta is once he gets that ability. So actually yeah, he doesn't have a ton of key links. Royal Lineage does give some key, um, but yeah, it makes it a little bit easier for you to manage getting those different super attacks if you want to. So I think it's a very interesting and well designed unit. Uh, the only thing I would say, uh, obviously his transformation, if you want to transform early, requires him to get a crit. And in his base passive and super attack when he's just Super Saiyan Vegeta, he doesn't actually have any extra way of getting crits. So you're relying on the crit from his hidden potential, um, which would imply that you want to give him a lot of crit in the hidden potential. But then once he transforms, his 11 key super has a great chance to crit. So you really don't want him to have too much crit. So he kind of needs to have a mix between the two. Uh, maybe even if it was just like a very low chance having a chance to crit in his passive pre-transformation would be good but I still think he's a very good unit very fun very interesting new kind of mechanic to have for like a transformation condition so very interesting one here and uh, shout out to Sint for this entry and let us move on to the next one okay so next up we have the entry from Chaos Kitcrass over here which is a super physical LR Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Goku and Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Goku. So it's actually Vegeta. So it's a Goku that exchanges into Vegeta, both Super Saiyan Blue. A uh, little bit of a mistype here on the uh, unit name. I was joking with the mods that this will be the reason why this one didn't win, but 
That's not exactly true. It was between this one and the next one, which is, of course, the winner for this week. It was very hard to decide between the two. Um, but, yeah, this one, very close second. So it's a LR Super Saiyan Blue Goku that trains, uh, exchanges into a Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta. Super physical, as I said. And their leader skill is Attained Evolution or Bond of Master and Disciple. This is based on, like, Resurrection F. So, of course, this is the Vegeta and Goku that have been training with Whis and achieved Super Saiyan Blue. So the leader skill makes perfect sense there. 4 key, 150 to stats. Uh, the super attack. So, obviously, start off as Goku. The 12 key super attack is raises attack and defense in one turn. Does colossal damage with a medium chance to stun and then the 18 key is infinitely stacking attack greatly raises defense of one turn and does mega colossal damage to the enemy vegeta uh, has the 12 key big bang attack greatly raises attack raises defense for one turn and causes uh, colossal damage to the enemy and then the 18 key wild rush is greatly raises attack raises defense for one turn and causes mega colossal damage with a high chance to stun so Goku's passive is 128% attack and defense, high chance to evade enemy attacks, so 50% chance to dodge built in, pretty good. Key plus 3, 70% attack and defense, and a high chance to perform a crit when facing only one enemy. Key plus 5, 59% attack and defense, and performs an additional attack that has a high chance to become a super attack. All allies, key plus 1 when attacking, exchanges when conditions are met, attacks effective against all types when facing a freezer enemy, freezer soldier excluded, so the tip Typical sort of exclusion thing here so if when facing a freezer attacks effective against all types and then the exchange into Vegeta so Goku exchanges to Vegeta when HP is 50% or below once only so once you change into Vegeta you recover 50% HP once only key plus three 100% att attack and defense key plus four when attacking damage reduction of 20% within the same turn after receiving an attack so he has to get hit once and then he gets 20% damage reduction. Attack and defense 40% when performing a super. Performs an additional attack that has a great chance to be a super within the same turn after receiving an attack. Gets a guaranteed crit when facing against the freezer. And then exchanges back to Goku and causes ultimate damage to the enemy when conditions are met. So the condition is once six attacks have been performed by the Vegeta. Um, this active skill goes off, does ex uh, ultimate damage to the enemy and exchanges back to Goku. So this is obviously going to be like, basically once Vegeta's given that beat down to Golden Freezer, like before he destroys the planet. And then yeah, you exchange back into Goku uh, and it does the ultimate damage because obviously the exchange is Goku coming in with the Kamehameha, which I think it says in here, yeah, when Vegeta exchanges back to Goku, Goku comes in and fires the Kamehameha at the enemy and does all my damage, and then you stay as Goku for the rest of the fight, so it works very well with the way Resurrection of F, like, works at the end there, so I thought that was very, very interesting. Uh, the links are pretty common, Super Saiyan Warrior Gods, Prepare for Battle, Super God Combat, Resurrection F, Fierce Battle, and Legendary Power, and Vegeta has the same. They're on Realm of Gods, Pure Saiyans, Movie Heroes, Goku Family, Kamehameha, Bond of Master and Disciple, Turtle School, Attain evolution and bond of friendship because obviously they are an exchange unit so they're on all the categories that a blue goku would be on so overall i thought this uh, unit was very good very well designed um they definitely seem pretty op but i mean obviously with power creep as it is in the game um especially with how much like resurrection of f gets a lot of flack now um it's not the best of the dragon ball movies for sure but i still do quite enjoy it so i did like this entry and uh, I would love to see a blue Goku and Vegeta exchange unit from Resurrection F at some point. So shout out to Chaos Kitcrass for this entry. Like I said, very close second. But let us go ahead and move on to the winning entry for this week. Okay, so without further ado, last but obviously not least is the entry from Ed the Simp. Uh, and that is a Path to Power Youth Goku. So... This is not the reason why this is the winner, but this will silence those of you out there that think that I hate OG Dragon Ball. And uh, yeah, we have a Youth Goku. He is a super tech unit. His leader skill is Dragon Ball Saga category 4 key and 170 to stats, or Movie Heroes 3 key and 150 to stats. I think that's an interesting combo, because Dragon Ball Saga really does need some love and needs to be supported really with another category. And the OG Kid Goku that has Dragon Ball Saga in youth, it's not the most exciting team in the world, so throwing Movie Heroes in there is definitely a nice bonus for that category. So... His super attack name and effect uh, is the power pole combo, raises attack and defense of one turn, does immense damage to the enemy. 
his passive, loss of a great friend. So attack and defense 159%, then he gets an additional attack and defense 10% per attack performed up to 59%. Then an additional attack and defense 59% if an ally whose name includes Hachan is on the team, which is the name for Android 8 or Ata, uh, gains a high chance to perform a critical hit when facing a Dragon Ball Saga enemy, gains a high chance to perform an additional super attack when an ally whose name includes Hachan is on the team, attack and defense 59% when HP falls below 50%, can activate active skill when conditions are met. So when he gets fully built up, and you have a Android 8 on the team, this guy will be putting out some pretty insane numbers. So whilst his super attack effects don't seem the most crazy, just raising attack and defense in one turn, uh, you know, once he's fully built up, his stats are going to be insanely high anyway. And then obviously when you drop below 50% HP, you get another massive buff as well. So uh, the active skill is the full power Kamehameha. So I remember someone posted the gif for this a while ago for wanting to see a Dragon Ball Saga Goku that has this. So the massive, super powerful Kamehameha. This would look awesome as an active skill in the game. Greatly raises attack, performs a critical hit temporarily. So basically what that means is he gets a guaranteed crit on the soup on the active skill, but then it doesn't carry on for the rest of the turn, like when he does the super attack afterwards. Uh, it does an ultimate damage to the enemy, greatly lowers defense. It can be activated when HP falls below 59%, starting from the fourth turn of battle, or can be activated when there is an extreme class Dragon Ball Saga category enemy so pretty rare um although you know we may see more events in the future where that becomes possible but without that you can still use it from the fourth turn which is not bad at all it's basically the same as like the lr super saiyan 4's active skill i think fourth turn is perfectly fine uh, his links are the innocence all in the family come in turtle school fierce battle incredible adventure guidance of the dragon balls categories youth goku family low class warrior rapid growth saviors movie heroes dragon ball saga exploding rage bonds of friendship Pure Saiyans, Revenge, and Turtle School. So this is like the Kid Goku, I think, with by far the most categories. But considering the moment that it's from, obviously he has categories like Movie Heroes and Exploding Rage that some of the other ones won't have. Um, but all of those do make sense. And then I did like as well this inclusion down here. So the additional info, there will be a free-to-play Android 8 who stacks defense and supports Dragon Ball Saga that you can farm from a story event. So the condition won't be too difficult for most players. This is actually very important. Um, it's something that Nolars talked about a lot on 5.9 and on various videos that we've done together. There is a law in Japan for gacha games. I think it's called Compu Gacha. he always says. Um, you cannot have a summonable unit that has an ability that requires another summonable unit because you're basically making people pay for two units to get the unit that they just summoned to achieve its full potential. So if a character has a restriction in their passive or their active skill or anything like that that requires another character to be on the team, there has to be a free to play version of that team or technically it's against that law. So this is very important, like for this unit to have to be requiring you to have an Android 8 on the team, there has to be a free to play Android 8 available in the game. So I like the fact that they actually mentioned this in the uh, additional info here. So because I was thinking when I started reading it, it's like, well, I mean, there's only what one Android 8 that's from that really bad Dragon Ball Saga banner. So that could be quite bad. And then as soon as I got to this bit down the bottom, not only does it make perfect sense, but he infinitely stacks defense and supports Dragon Ball Saga. So he's not a detriment to the team when you use him in order to get the Kid Goku's full effectiveness. So I really, really like this unit. I think that was a great idea. Super Tech, I think, is probably one of the weaker super types as well. So I think that's a good typing for him. So yeah, overall, I think this unit is very, very good. If this was released as an actual Dokkan Fest, I would actually be excited to summon for him. The active skill animation would be awesome. So this would be a very, very cool unit. So shout out to Ed the Simp for winning this week's episode of Fan Creation Friday. As always, that means you'll get to be a guest judge on the next episode. So the theme for the next episode is not yet decided. Like I said at the start of the video, if you wanna be involved in the next video, I often let the guys in the Discord uh, pick like a straw poll to pick which of the themes they want to go for for the next one. So if you wanna be involved in all that process and submit a card for the next episode, make sure you do join the Discord. The link is down below in the description. So. 
Again, congratulations to Ed the Simp. Shout out to everybody who submitted an entry, whether you made it into the video or not. There was a lot of really good ones, and it's always really hard to pick which ones make it into the video. So I do appreciate all you guys and the mods as well, and CJ Blaze, last week's previous winner, for helping me judge the entries for this week. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been the Master Ningen. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store, and I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.